Good morning, I'm Jordan Slocum, and this is the Doan College Review here on 95.5 KUTT. The Doan College Review is every Saturday from 8 until 8.30, where we talk about the athletics, academics, and more from around Doan College. On today's episode, we talk to football coach Matt Franzen, ahead of the big showdown with Dakota Wesleyan later today, which you can listen to here on 95.5 KUTT, kickoff at 1. We'll also talk to women's basketball coach Tracy Fairbanks as Doan is getting ready to start the season in just a few weeks. And we talk to Amy Jurgens, the Doan Director of Annual Fund and Advancement Operations. With temperatures up into the mid-80s expected tomorrow, you might not be thinking that it's really basketball season, but believe it or not, we are only a few weeks away from the start of the season for both the Doan women's and men's basketball teams. And practice is already underway for women's basketball coach Tracy Fairbanks and her squad. What has she seen so far? Well, so far I've been pleased with our efforts on the court and um, what we've been putting forth, just trying to get better every day. Um, It's always to start out kind of interesting because the upperclassmen are trying to help out and bring along the new recruits, and but the new recruits are really working hard and wanting to learn, so that's a, that's a pretty good combination. Are there any facets of the game that have stood out as a strength or you think could become a strength? I think, honestly, our experience could be um, an advantage for us. We graduated one senior last year, so we have a core of our team coming back. We have four seniors, and we have geez, about eight juniors. So um, I think that those numbers and just experience should um, really benefit us this year. Talking to Doan women's basketball coach Tracy Fairbanks, any of those players stand out in terms of leadership? Oh, absolutely. Just all of our seniors in general have really taken kind of the bull by the horns and wanted to make sure that this is their best season yet. And so I've really been proud of what they've shown leadership-wise. Individually, I would say Heather Broman out of Fillmore Central, she kind of just rises above and has always been the one to be a little more vocal. But she leads not just by the words that come out of her mouth, but by her actions on and off the court. She's a hard worker, and I think the other um, seniors kind of follow that as well as the rest of the team. She sets a really good example. In the first practices of the year, what are some things you like to focus on? Oh, geez, all facets of the basketball game. But this year for us, we're putting in a brand-new offense that the girls have never seen or um, never played. So that has been a focus, but also just defense. We, um, it's easy a lot of times for kids to just want to play offense. um, And then they think they have to play defense. We really want to try to change their mindset into um, wanting to play defense, just like they want to play offense. And so we work on that and work on the trust factor and, and, And our system, our defense is a system. It's not just about help here and help there, but it's putting the whole system together. Talking to Doan women's basketball coach Tracy Fairbanks, you mentioned a new offense being installed this year. What led to that change? Actually, just watching some other um, game film on um, another team from another state, we just really like the flow of the offense and the up-tempo and the score mentality. And we felt strongly with what we had returning and the experience and the different abilities on how to score, both around the rim, driving at the basket, three-point shooting. And we felt we really had the repertoire to utilize this offense. So we're taking it step-by-step, day-by-day, but so far I'm really liking what we're seeing. When you look at this year's G Pack, what do you see looking at the teams? <sighs> tough, 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 <laughs> and more tough. But you know what? That's all we've known. The G Pack women's basketball team is the toughest conference in the nation. I believe it's 12 out of 15 or 16 years that someone has um, from our conference has been the national champion. So um, we're just ready to play. We feel we finished um, right in the run for fifth place in the conference last year and four teams made it to the national tournament and all four made it to the final four of the national tournament so 
we feel we're right on the brink, but we have to be ready to play our best ball, no games off, um, every GPAC game out. Um, and that's just the, the beauty of the GPAC, if you will. You do have a few non-conference games to start the season toward the end of October. What do you see looking at that part of the schedule? Um, I'm looking forward to that part of the schedule. Um, we play a couple teams out of Kansas and the KCAC, and then um, Johnson and Wells, who's coming from Colorado, who we haven't, we haven't played in quite some time. But it's always nice to kind of get an early start since our conference schedule starts so early. It's nice to get some games under our belt to prepare us for our our brutal conference. So I'm looking forward to those games and kind of I'm able to see where we're at and what we need to work on going then forward into the conference in early November. Last question, Coach. What are the biggest things you want to see from your team in the first few weeks of the season? Team chemistry, playing together, playing for each other, and that just doesn't happen overnight. That doesn't happen in in three practices, four practices that we've had so far. It takes time. It takes a lot of um, good leadership, and um, so that's important for us. And then the effort, um, just putting forth immense effort on the court, no matter what the drill is, whether it's a competitive drill or it's a fundamental drill. And so far, um, like I said earlier on, I've really been pleased with our efforts so far, but we definitely have room to improve and definitely have to keep that getting better. But there's no doubt in my mind that with the leadership we have in the juniors and seniors that they um, won't work to make that happen. That was Doan women's basketball coach Tracy Fairbanks here on the Doan College Review. They begin their season on Tuesday, October 27th on the road at Bethany College. And then on Friday the 30th, they will have their home opener against Johnson & Wales. <laughs> Once again, this is the Doan College Review on 99.5 KUTT, which airs every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. until 8.30 with the latest in news from Doan College. I'm Jordan Slocum. Still to come on the program, we'll hear from Doan football coach Matt Franzen as the Tigers take on Dakota Wesleyan later today in number 8 versus number 12. And we'll also talk to Amy Jurgens, the director of the annual fund and advancement operations. Here's what happened over the last week for Doan College Athletics. Last Saturday, the football team won on the road 44-7 over Nebraska Wesleyan to improve to 5-0. Both the men's and women's soccer teams were victorious last Saturday at home over Mount Marty College. The Tiger women won 10-0, the men won 11-0. In the women's game, Sarah Cushing scored her 60th career goal, making her the all-time Doan scoring leader. And also on Saturday, the Doan volleyball team defeated Dakota Wesleyan in three sets, 25-13, 25-17, 25-17. On Sunday, the women's soccer team defeated Johnson & Wales 7-2, with the men's team playing them to a 2-2 draw. On Monday, the women's golf team took 11th out of 12 teams in the second round GPAC qualifier, and the JV football team won 34-7 over Nebraska Wesleyan. Then on Wednesday, the volleyball team defeated the College of St. Mary in four sets, and the soccer teams fell to nationally ranked Hastings squads. Final score for the men was 3-0 and 3-1 for the women. Also on Wednesday, Doan announced the addition of shotgun sports as a new varsity sport beginning the next academic year. According to a press release, Rick Marshall, a member of the Trap Shooting Hall of Fame, will be the coach of the program. They join fellow GPAC teams, Concordia, Hastings, and Midland in having a varsity shotgun program. We'll have more on that in the coming weeks. As for today, the big focus is the NAIA Football Game of the Week, Doan's homecoming game against Dakota Wesleyan. The Doan Tigers are now ranked number 8 in the country, with the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers ranked 12th. For head coach Matt Franzen, his team moved to 5-0 and with a 44-7 victory last week against Nebraska Wesleyan. Well, I thought, as a, I think as a team, probably as complete a game as we've played. Um, you know, I think defensively we've probably put up better numbers in, in some of the games, but, but again, when you look at all phases of our team, I think probably as... As, uh, as complete a game as we played and also through four quarters. I think it was the, probably the first 
the first game that the offense really put together a solid third quarter and and then finished out pretty well. So we were we were happy with it. And uh, you know, going into the Wesleyan game, there's always that rivalry factor where you just don't know for sure what's what's going to happen. And we felt like we matched up real well this year, but. You just, as a coach, you just never know what's going to happen. And so coming out of it, we, uh, like I said, with the result, we felt great. I don't think it could have worked out a whole lot better for us. Defensively, it was much like the other games this year, another sturdy performance. Offensively, though, the running game was outstanding. Is that the best running performance you've seen at Doan? It is. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember ever rushing for 400 yards. Um, and so I, I would say, I would safely say that that's the, the strongest run game that we've had in my in my nine years and so you know hopefully that's something that isn't just a fluke deal nate had the long run there uh, at the end which i think was about a 60 or 70 yarder that obviously put that up over 400 and put him up over over 200 but hopefully like i said we can continue that kind of that kind of performance now we're not going to be the you know the 1983 corn huskers with uh, with our run game but if we can run the ball consistently that's the thing that we that we need to be able to do just to to be able to run the ball and rely on the the ability to run the ball and that will open up the passing game for us like we need it to talking to Doan football coach Matt Franzen you talked about consistency the pass game consistency is maybe the one thing they haven't necessarily had and they've had a lot of big moments but not necessarily the complete consistency you'd want. What have you seen looking at that group? Well, I think you're. I think you're right there. That it's a, it's still a work in progress and something that that we're you know constantly working on through the week and trying to game plan the opponents that we're playing against and with the different coverages that you see from week to week and then the different techniques that the defensive backs play. Um, our our group of receivers. We have some 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 younger receivers that are. Still learning the position. Uh, you know, Drew Klein has been playing wide receiver for now for about five or six weeks of his of his his life, and he was a running back up until that point. And so, so he's a guy, like I said, that's really still just learning the position and and learning on the fly. But his upside is incredible, and uh, and so uh, I guess that's where we're at. That's one area that uh, that we're still working on. But at the same time, our our pass numbers, our yardage numbers have been good. I think we're second in the conference in pass touchdowns, and so uh, so we've been able to do some things. And and I think with our passing game, we one of the things that we really want to do is be is is stretch the defense and be able to to throw deep and and then soften up the safeties. And that's part of our run game too. And and that's something I think that we've proven that we can do, and we're and we're willing to throw the ball deep when we need to. Once again, talking to Doan football coach Matt Franzen. Up next, Coach, you have Dakota Wesleyan. When you look back at last year's game, what are your thoughts on that one? It was a tough loss. Yeah, we don't look back at that game. <laughs> um, it was a, a, a gut-wrencher, and looking back at it, we've watched film of that game this week because there were a lot of things we did in that game that we did really well and that we want to that we want to do this year again. And they have the same people back for the most part. Um, they graduated their running back, and that's really about it. So so that we're going to see the same type of team, I think, from Dakota Wesleyan. They're doing a little more on offense. But defensively, it's the same scheme and the same people. So looking to fix some of the things that we did last year and some of the problems that I think we created for ourselves last year, I think we're, we feel like we're better prepared going in this year. With that said, we led by 16 points with eight and a half minutes to go last year. And we've talked to the team about it just once. We brought it up at the beginning of the week that we have all the ability in the world to win this game. We need to close out, and, we, and we're a better team, we feel like, than we were at that, at that point of last season. And so um, so that's, I guess that's where we're at. But I guess, if anything, we feel confident coming off of last year's game because we were in a position to win, and it was at Mitchell, which is never an easy place to play. And now we have the, the same matchup, but now we have them at Crete and, and homecoming, and hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that's a good thing for us. Looking at their offense first, what do you see? Quarterback. Uh, we, we think this is the best quarterback. He's fast. No question that we've seen this far. Uh, there's, there's a quarterback up at Morningside that, that could, be, uh, could be better, and I, I didn't say is better, but, uh, but th- those are probably the two best quarterbacks in the league. And so that's the thing this, this week that we're really working on on defense is keeping the quarterback in check. Uh, he throws the ball well, but he runs the ball even better. And uh, a running quarterback 
in this day and age of spread offenses is very, very dangerous. And so that's the thing that we're working on on defense, like I said, to keep him in check. It's, a, it's an assignment week. They do a lot of reads and run reads with their quarterback, and so we need to play good assignment football first and foremost. Switching to Dakota Wesleyan's defense, what do you see? Well, defensively, they're, they're a 3-4 defense, uh, similar in scheme up front anyway to what we saw last week with, with Nebraska Wesleyan, more athletic, though, than, than that. And their coverage, uh, their secondary, they, do, they disguise things real well, and they'll do some different things in the secondary that can confuse a quarterback and receivers. And so those are the things we've been trying to show during the week to get our guys ready and good personnel. They have an outside linebacker, uh, Brady Bonte, number four, who we feel is one of the best linebackers in the conference. And uh, and so he's a guy that he really hurt us last year with his edge blitzing. And, and so we're doing some things, like I said, to try and neutralize him anyway and, and maybe – maybe take him, uh, you know, not take him out of the equation because he'll make his plays, but uh, at least make it so he's not beating us single-handedly, which last year in certain cases that did happen. Talking to Doan football coach Matt Franzen, last question, coach, biggest keys for your team to come away with a win over Dakota Wesleyan? Well, you know, I, I really feel this week that special teams is going to be a big part of the game. Um, I think that the teams match up evenly. I really do, and this is the same thing I probably told you two weeks ago with Northwestern Iowa. I, I think it's a very similar type of uh, type of matchup. Now, I think Dakota Wesleyan is stronger on offense than Northwestern was, and Northwestern is probably stronger on defense than Dakota Wesleyan is. But as far as the two teams match up, I think that we're we're pretty even uh, across the board. And so I think special teams is going to be big. And um, I like our special teams. I like our kicker. I like our units and what we've been able to do so far this season. So like I said, I think that'll show up, and um, and I'm comfortable with that because if it comes down to special teams, like I said, I, I, I like what we do and where we're at. And and um, other than that, it's going to be the same old, same old. we got to take care of the football and, and manage the clock a little bit and, and make a few big plays and hopefully not give any up. That was Doan football coach Matt Franzen, and Doan plays Dakota Wesleyan this afternoon. You can listen here on 99.5 KUTT with kickoff at 1 o'clock and the Ken's You Save Health Mart Pharmacy pregame at 12.30. The Doan football team's not the only Tiger program competing today. The men's and women's cross-country team are on the road for the Briarcliff Invitational. The volleyball team is on the road to take on number 14, Dort College. That one will begin at 5 o'clock. And the soccer teams are on the road at Northwestern College, with the women playing at 4 and the men at 6.15. After this short pause, we will return and speak with Amy Jurgens, the Director of the Annual Fund and Advancement Operations at Doan. You're listening to the Doan College Review on 99.5 KUTT. It's Charlotte. Battle for the lead going into one. Jeff Gordon dives underneath the Toyota of Kyle Busch. A Bank of America 500. Brian Dicker goes sliding and spinning to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll try to keep it off the inside ball. Side by side down the back stretch. The battle for the lead in the Bank of America 500. Give it to Kevin Harvick. The Bank of America 500. Saturday, October 10th at 5 p.m. Catch all the action on 90.5 KUTT. Last year ended with a historic win. Stewart fakes a sweep, throws, caught by the tight end, Wetzler, for the two-point conversion. The Doan Tigers have upset the number one team in the country. What does 2015 hold for the Doan College football team? Find out Saturdays on 90.5 KUTT. Listen to every game and every snap as the Doan Tigers fight for a GPAC championship. For the complete schedule, visit KUTT995.com. It's Doan College football on 90.5 KUTT. Once again, you are listening to the Doan College Review here on 90.5 KUTT. This program airs from 8 to 8.30 every Saturday morning. It's now time to talk with Amy Jurgens, the Director of the Annual Fund and Advancement Operations at Doan. She's in charge of the Doan Scholarship Fund and tells us a bit about the fund. The Doan Fund has been a part of Doan for many, many years. Um, it encompasses gifts that are made and spent within the same fiscal year. Um, we have many donors who donate every single year to the Doan Fund. Um, this ongoing support provides vital support to enhance the Doan experience for all of our students here at the college. So the fund supports pretty much all aspects of 
life at Doan of all the programs, more or less? It certainly does. It offers financial support for scholarships, for individual academic programs, for theater, music, athletics, um, technology that all of us use here at Doan, and also undergraduate research, which kind of sets Doan apart. Um, we're very proud of that aspect of our academic program. Um, and like you said, Jordan, it does support all areas of Doan. Now, if somebody wanted to donate, could they specify to a specific area, like I want it to be in biology or something, or is it always general? No. Um, our main goal, I work in the advancement office, our main goal is always to connect the donor with their passion here at Doan. So we realize that many of our donors are past alumni, and maybe they were involved in all a Greek um, fraternity or sorority, or maybe they were involved in athletics or music or the forensic um, program here at Doan. So we want to make sure that when we visit with donors that their donation is going to where they want it to go. Um, we also like to educate our donors in that um, the Doan Fund supports so many areas. And so we eventually want to encourage all donors to give both to their specific passion and then also give to the Doan Fund. I'm talking to Amy Jurgens, who is the Director of Annual Fund and Advancement Operations. This is the Doan College Review. Now, is there any deadlines in terms to when you can donate or just whenever you want to do it, you can do it? Absolutely, Jordan, that we will accept donations to Doan year-round, of course. Um, the Doan Fund is unique in that um, our goal, or the when we end our fiscal year, um, money that comes in between July 1st and June 30th of a specific year, that's our fiscal year, um, that money then is spent. So the annual fund is defined by monies or donations that come in in the fiscal year and then are spent during that fiscal year. Are there any maximums or minimums as far as the donation amount? No. Um, we have some donors who have given $25 every single year since they graduated from Doan. Um, we greatly appreciate their loyalty and their support that they've given to Doan. We do have a very unique group of individuals at Doan that are members of the Doan College Society. Um, they are donors who have given $1,000 or more over the last year, um, and we like to honor those um, people in different publications and different events that we have here on campus. But any amount is greatly appreciated, and um, like I said, we have donors who have given smaller amounts and larger amounts, and they all um, are put to work here at Doan. And especially with the Doan College Society and anybody who donates, I'm imagining you're meeting people from all different backgrounds who are sending money to Doan. Absolutely. Um, we have a unique opportunity in our office to um, touch base with alumni who live here in the United States and who live internationally, um, who have varied experiences that all kind of started with their experience here at Doan. Um, so we get to hear all of their stories, and then we share those stories with students here on campus and then also with other donors um, because that, you know, it builds a community and um, people like to hear how Doan affected other people um, when they were here studying. This is the Doan College Review on 90.5 KUTT. Again, I'm talking to Amy Jurgens, who is the director of the Annual Fund and Advancement Operations. You joined Doan in 2014. How has it been for you personally over the year and a half or so you've been at Doan? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've worked in advancement um, oh, for the last seven or eight years um, and had an opportunity to come to Doan, and I tell anybody that I can that this is absolutely my dream job. Um, I 
graduated from Wartburg College, which is very similar to Doan. I have a liberal arts background and was very excited to get an opportunity to come and work in a higher ed um, situation. But I thoroughly enjoy meeting with donors. Um, I do a lot of work with faculty and staff here on campus. And every once in a while, I get to meet some students who have received scholarship money um, from our donors. And that's probably my highlight is when I get to sit down and visit with them and actually see the fruits of um, our support, our supporters' donations. Do you have any advice for any students who would be potentially listening or maybe people who are going to be coming to college in the future as far as getting those scholarship opportunities? Sure. Um, it's great. First of all, I would recommend that you come and see Doan. Um, as early as your sophomore year in high school, um, just come and visit. Um, and then also really look at what you're interested in, like what do you want to study. And not every student knows that when they start, but really kind of get an idea of what you would like to study. And then it just naturally seems to open up different scholarship opportunities. We have many donors who set up scholarships for specific um, areas, and th those are funded, um, you know, by donors who have a passion for um, physics or for biology. And so that provides opportunities for those students to get financial aid from those specific areas. Talking with Amy Jurgens again. Last question, Amy. Um, for anybody who's interested in donating or learning more, what are the steps they need to take to set that up? Sure. Um, we would certainly like to sit down and visit with them, um, hear their story about um, why they're interested in giving to Doan. Um, so we do a lot of face-to-face -face, um, lunches and suppers and just sit-downs with people. Um, so they can certainly call our office here at Doan. Um, if you already have an ongoing relationship with Doan, you can certainly give online through our website, or you can certainly um, write a check, um, and we'll um, take care of your donation that way, too. Um, we are just in the process of um, getting ready to send out our largest mailing um, to our supporters um, to Doan, so I'd like to you know, have your listeners be on the lookout for those in their mailbox because they'll be arriving in a week or so, and they can certainly um, take a look at that information and then um, either go online or um, send us a check if they feel so moved to do so. So the amount of people who have been giving has gone up. Yes, and we are excited to... Um, see an increase in our donations from our campuses in Grand Island and Lincoln and Omaha. Um, those, group, that, those groups of um, graduates haven't necessarily received information from us about supporting Doan, and we've done that in the last year and a half, and we've seen great um, success in reaching those people and then um, connecting them to areas that they want to support here at Doan. Once again, that was Amy Jurgens, the Director of the Annual Fund and Advancement Operations at Doan. And for more information on the Doan Fund, you can head online to doan.edu slash doan hyphen scholarship hyphen fund. Of course, you can always just head to doan.edu for the latest on the academics of Doan, and head to doanathletics.com for the latest in Doan athletics. Speaking of athletics, later on today here on 99.5 KUTT, we will have football on the air as the number 8 Doan Tigers take on the number 12 Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. Remember, you can listen here on 99.5 KUTT. Pre-game coverage will begin around 12.30 with kickoff at 1.00. That concludes this week's episode of the Doan College Review. Remember, you can listen to the Doan College Review from 8 a.m. until 8.30 every Saturday morning. I'm Jordan Slocum. Until next time, farewell. Farewell.